The preceding program was made possible by this and other public television stations. The survival special, The Forbidden Desert of the Danakil, is brought to you locally by Donald Wiesner. Come along on an Arctic adventure as Marty Stauffer reveals how some animals survive in the ice and snow of the frozen north by being white on white. Here the climate itself is a predator, but not the only one. See life and death drama unfold in a land of stark beauty. Don't miss this episode of Wild America. Marty Stauffer's Wild America, Sunday night at 7. Veronica. On Discover the World of Science, we'll find out when shyness begins and if being shy means that you catch more colds. We'll also cook up an ice cream sundae in an oven and see how this little bird might help future generations of endangered species. I'm Peter Graves. Join me next time on Discover the World of Science. Tuesday night at 8, here on Channel 2. You're watching KTCA-TV, Channel 2. It takes two. Yes, it had to be stolen at 2 o'clock. Now, now, you heard the lady's plea about how her pie is a history. Now it's your chance to call the team. Tell me, what were you doing that afternoon? Well, I left my home at 1 o'clock to ride my skateboard around the block. Did a little of this and a little of that. And I didn't get home till 3 o'clock. Did anybody see it? Don't think so. Why? Kid, you could use an alibi. But my dad got home at 1, you see, but nobody saw me again. From one to three, this birdie flew and the crust bit the dust along about two. One more question, I'll make it brief, cause man might have a finger the thief. How far is this kid's habitat from the place where Granny hangs her hat? The plaintiff lived up by the bay and the girl lives about four miles away. I say what? 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 Four miles? 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 What? 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 Four, four miles? miles? Give or take a bit. Word, that's the end of it. This child is innocent. Of this, I'm confident. She did not do the deed. The clue is the rate of speed. Someone on a skateboard has the power to cruise at just about three miles an hour. What well, that means, 60 minutes or so, three little old miles is all she can go. But the lady lives four miles away. Yo, yo, homeboy, I hear what you say. Around trip of eight miles, there's just no way. Yo, yo, we're hip and bad as that. We got the math is here to help us solve the fact. A child on a skateboard has the time to steal a pie and seal the crime. So let's all split if you get my gist. And if you don't, then case dismissed. 
test your mathematical wits against those of today's contestants on the game show of number smarts and geometric skill. Hi, I'm Reggie Cathy, and welcome to a special edition of Triple Play. Yes, all right. Now, would you please join me in welcoming our special edition host, the very special Cynthia Darlow. And a special hello to you, Reggie. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today on Triple Play. The object of the game is to get three numbers on the board that, with the line segments connecting them, form an equilateral triangle. Now, the way to get a number on the board is you spin these two wheels. Michael, will you spin for me, please? You holler out the sum or product of those two numbers, and that number will light up on the board. The first contestant to get an equilateral triangle and call out triple play wins the game. Now, today we're doing something a little different on triple play. A playoff round. Both of our contestants have been previous challengers on triple play. Sean Lowe and Michael Spensieri, it's good to have you back again. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being here. Well, I think we should just plunge right into the game. Michael, you won the toss backstage? No, he did. Sean did. Okay, you spin first. Three, ten. Three plus ten is thirteen. Thirteen purple. Michael, your turn. One, ten. Ten plus one is eleven. Eleven green. Sean, your turn. Five, twelve. Five plus twelve is seventeen. Seventeen purple. Michael, your turn. Four, seven. Seven times four is twenty-eight. Twenty-eight green. Sean, spin again. Six, seven. Six plus seven is thirteen. Thirteen is already covered. I'm sorry, play goes to Michael. One, eight. Eight times one is eight. Eight green. Sean, your turn. Three, seven. Three times seven is twenty-one. Twenty-one purple. Michael, your turn. One, eighteen. Three, nine. Nine times three is twenty-seven. Twenty-seven green. Sean, your turn. Four, eight. Four plus eight is twelve. Twelve purple. Ooh, we're all over the board here. Look out for those triple plays. Michael. Four square one T's. Four square one T's is twelve. Twelve purple. Michael, your turn. Four, eight. Four plus three is twenty-four. Twenty-four triple green. Play. Call out the numbers, Michael. Eleven, twenty-four, and twenty-seven. Congratulations. Well Oh, we have time for a bonus round, Sean. This gives you another chance. Let, uh, you uh, you uh, went first, Michael, so now, Sean, you spin first. Five and square one TV. Five plus two is seven. Seven gr purple. Michael, your turn. Four, ten. Ten plus four is fourteen. Fourteen green. One, ten. Ten plus one is eleven. Eleven purple. Michael, your turn. Six, seven. Seven plus six is thirteen. Thirteen green. Sean, your spin. Four, eight. Four plus eight is twelve. Triple play. Call out the numbers. Eleven, sir. twelve, seven. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy for both of you. Your prize is a Square One TV sweater. I hope you'll enjoy it. And it was a real pleasure having you back again. Thanks thank a lot. You. And thank you all for joining us again on Triple Play. I hope we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Thursday, 9.43 a.m., and the sheets of rain which had blanketed the L.A. area had been hung out to dry. 
I was working the day watch out of MathNet. My partner is Kate Monday, who was laid up with a bad knee and pretty cranky about being out of the mainstream, current-wise. Head of our computer division is Debbie Williams. My name is Frankly. I'm a mathematician. A series of pranks had been ongoing at area savings institutions, and I'd been trying to puzzle through to an answer as to who was playing them and why. No money was stolen, no one was hurt. They were just pranks which interrupted the flow of business. Eight banks had been pranked, and we learned that they were all owned by one man, A. Holding Co. I decided to pay him a visit. Thank you for seeing me, sir. And may I say you certainly do look familiar to me. Could we have met? Well, I presume it's possible, but I don't recall. Did you used to manage Arts Deli Rats in the Studio City Little League? No. You said you wanted to talk about my banks. Yes, sir. Specifically the eight that have recently been pranked. Any idea who would want to do this to you? No, and I've combed our records. Any disgruntled employees? Yes, but bankers always have disgruntled employees. Even gruntled employees, I'll bet. <laughs> How about any past customers who might be ticked? We can't find a thing. But if you do, I would most appreciate a call. And now I'm afraid I must away to attend a celebration. Oh, really? Uh, yes, we're having a do for my very first savings institution. Coe's the feeling is mutual savings. Is that the place on La Cienega? That's right. Of course, since A. Holding Co. became a holding company, we dropped the surname. Uh, please stay in touch, Mr. Frankly. I will. I swear I've met you. Do you go to the drive-in movies in the valley? Never. Good day. Good morning, George. Hi, Jimmy. Kate Cole? As a matter of fact, no. Uh, Bernie Woodward is here to see you. I'll take it from here, sweetheart. I got another poem, and it's a doozy. Another poem? Has there been another pranking? No. Let's see the poem. This poem I vow is my last. The time for bank pranking is past. I'm tired of holding and mutuals folding. There will be an incredible explosion. Have a nice day. Strange, huh? Yes. When did you get this, Bernie? I don't know. I haven't got a watch. About an hour ago. Whoever is doing this seems to have broken the pattern. Several of them. The rhyme scheme is broken. The poem is not in a bank's withdrawal slip. And it's typed, not written. And it was delivered before the prank. I'm going to get a watch, but I haven't had the time. Maybe I could do that now. Something else. The other poems were kind of nyah nyahs, you know? This one is a warning, an incredible explosion. I mean, he could have said an incredible blast. That would have rhymed. He did this on purpose, for some reason. Something else about this. In the other poems, he named the bank. But look at this, mutual. There's a mutual savings bank on La Cienega. For sure as heck is. Co's the feeling is mutual savings. And, and look at this. I'm tired of holding. A. Holding Co. George. All right, call Sam and Steve and have them meet me at the bank as soon as possible. I've got to get out of here. Math, Math, not frankly. George, now, now take it easy. I want you to know I'm calm. I'm rational. What is it, Kate? I'm hot on the trail. I saw Raymond Sticker wiring dynamite to another clock. I'm sure you did, Kate. George, it was my clock. Kate, you can always get another clock. I've really got to... George, he was using wires. You don't use wires in a mechanical clock. It has to be dynamite. Come on, Kate. He left his apartment about two minutes ago. Now, I want you to get a search warrant and go over that place while he's gone. Kate, 
I have got a lead that is going to crack the bank prank caper, and I... Bank prank? I've got a neighbor who's building bombs, and you're running around after a prankster. Goodbye, Kate. I'll be there as soon as I can. Someone once said to me, show me how to make a left-hand turn on Wilshire Boulevard at high noon, and I'll buy you a house in the country. I knew what he meant. Traffic's always worse when you're in a hurry. That's why I like TV cops better than real life cops. There's never any traffic and always a place to park. Sorry, what's going on? Everybody who went in the bank is still there, George. Has anyone come out? Not one alleged perpetrator. Let's go. Excuse me, I... Yes. Oh, Mr. Sticker. How do you do, Mr. Frankly? Excuse me, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Good day. Mr. Coe? Frankly, Mathnet! Sam, did you see the man that just left the bank? Yes. Arrest him. What for? Attempting to blow up a bank. Let's roll. Mr. Frankly, this is highly unusual. It certainly is. Where did that grandfather clock come from, Mr. Cope? Well, I don't know. Many customers sent presents on the occasion of our 50th birthday. Why do you wish to know? It's a bomb, that's why. Stand back! Can I do anything, Mr. Franklin? Is there a back door? Yes. Ask your friends to use it and leave. Quietly. Use the back door and leave. Quietly. So Kate was right. These counterweights are really sticks of dynamite. I'll have to remove them. These aren't the sticks of dynamite. They're just parts of the clock. I don't get it. You mean it's not a bomb? Well, if I took the weights off the clock, how come the clock is still working? It's detonated by an electrical impulse. That's your bomb, Mr. Coe. It's a plastic bomb set to be exploded by an electrical charge.
when Grandpa struck 12. Oh. We got him, George. Did you read him his rights? Yes, but I don't think he understood them. Raymond Sticker. Hello, Co. What do you know? You just about went to Tokyo. You know this man? Yes, I do. I should say he does. You put me out of business. I vowed to get back at you, didn't I, a holding co? Years ago, Sticker came to me for a loan to finance a stupid invention of stupid. his. Stupid? Ha! That's what you say. What was it? A perpetual clock. A clock that would run forever. You didn't lend him the money? Of course not. The clock lost about five minutes every hour. Yes, but it did it forever. Let me ask you something, Sticker. Why did you prank Mr. Coe's banks in that pattern? What pattern? The first bank had assets of 10 million plus. The second had about 20, the third about 30, and so on. My partner figured it out. Just a coincidence. I didn't even know there was a pattern. Well, Mr. Poet, the time for bank pranking is past. Yes, but I would still be able to enjoy one last blast. <laughs> Take him away, boy. <laughs> what do you suppose he meant by that? One last blast. I don't know. The man is obviously a little bit cuckoo. He... Kate! wired to the door. If you pull it open, it will set the bomb off. Don't open the door. Good point. I'll get a ladder and come over the balcony. Don't worry, Kate. George, there's no time. It's also set to a digital countdown clock that will go off in one minute, 13 seconds. Boy, Raymond thought of everything. George, get out of the building before it's too late. No, we can think of something. George, please, you've got the rest of your life in front of you. Get out while you can. Kate, is the wire taut or slack? Who cares? Answer me. It's slack. So if I open the door, it tightens the wire and sets off the bomb? I think that's how it works. I studied this kind of demolition in math at school, Kate. That's nice, George. Get out of here. If we can keep the wire slack while I open the door, There's only 48 seconds left. Kate, wind the propeller on the model plane. What? Do it! George, get out. I love working with you, but get out. Is it wound? Yes. Throw it at the clock. What? Do it, Kate. Gosh darn it. Well? I did it. The clock is on the floor.
Plenty of time left, Pard. No sweat. That's what she said. Her saw bones put her on crutches and gave her a big A-OK. -okay. George, did Kate ever tell you how she hurt her knee? Sure didn't. Good luck, Kate. Thanks, Sam. Kate, you look great. Hi, my friends. I feel so much better. Hi, Pard. How's the wheel? Every day and every way, George. What's that smell? It smells like perfume. I completely forgot. It's a note I got in Monday's episode. Forgot to read it. What? Who's sending you perfume letters, George? Martha. She says, see if Debbie and Kate would like to come by for dinner. When? Last Tuesday. <sighs> Could you have made it? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Raymond Sticker was tried and convicted of a 313.13, vandalizing a bank that is bigger than a bread box, and a 719.5, trying to blow up a bank so it will be smaller than a bread box. During the trial held in and for the County of Los Angeles, the defendant stated, I gave you the clues all in rhyme. I thought that idea sublime. But you used clever math to cross up my path, and now I will have to do time. Percent of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, the U.S. Department of Education, and the Carnegie Corporation of New York. Which unleashes the forces of evil on...